I am Rockwell Knuckles, and welcome to What Year Is It? Today, oddly enough, I guess the year is going to be 2021. March 26th of 2021, to be specific. He's stopping two criminals who are like robbing some place, and he's trying to find out who their boss is, and then beep, 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 beep. He's like, ah, I'm going to leave you two guys here to hang and think about what, uh, what you did till I'll be back. So he's trying to go to headquarters. War woman. Turns out she's the CEO of like some billion dollar corporation. But she still wants to help the people. She goes, bing! And she turns to a superhero costume. Beep, 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 beep. She gotta go. And then um, everybody, everybody, everybody goes. The immortal gets the beep, 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 beep. He goes. Uh, the green ghost. She's a photographer. She's taking pictures. And it's beautiful because you get to see characters. I don't know nothing about these fucking characters. I ain't never seen these characters before in my life. I don't know who the hell Green Ghost is. A Red Rush, a Immortal, a War Woman, a fucking... I don't know. I've never heard of these characters. This is the first episode. This is my first time meeting these folks. And they literally, in one scene, let you know everything you need to know about these folks. They're a team. They've worked together for years. When they get the call, they're on the way. One's a businesswoman, one's a photographer. Uh, the, the weird one was the Martian man, the alien guy. He was in this like dilapidated like bando with this little girl kid. And he was like stretching his body out to see how far he could possibly stretch into room. And the kids, you know, doing the markings for him. And I'm like, what the hell is that? And he's sitting there like, and he gets the beep, 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 beep. And it was like, oh, I've got to go. And the little girl was like, oh, can I go with you? Come on, Nikki. You know human children are not allowed to dangerous guardian. So, I'm sitting there like, who is this fucking homeless little kid? Who the fuck is this? We're Martian man. I need an explanation for that one. I need an explanation. Why are you in a bando with this? Never mind. Never mind. Fuck it. Okay, so uh, Green Ghost. Green Ghost is a photographer, a black woman. She's doing these like, high-end photo shoot. She gets the beep, 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 beep. She's like, oh, whoop, that's a wrap, everybody. Catch you later. She puts this, like, green piece of gum or something in her mouth. Next thing you know, she's all green, and she can fucking fly and float through things. So she's the green ghost now. Um, so the entire team meets up at this headquarters in, like, the mountains. Like, like the Alps type, the mountains. You know what I mean? There's this... Uh, they all get there. They're all meeting inside. They're like, what's going on? What's happening? Oh, who called us? Does, does anybody know who called us? Does anybody know who called us? Next thing you know, Red Rush feels something, sees something before it happens, runs over, grabs, I forget which hero, and gets him or her out of the way because Omni-Man was about to knock his or her fucking Head off. Red Rush is like, whoa, what's going on, dude? Are you okay? You almost hit him. Omni-Man turns around looking mean and just starts beating all of the guardians of the globe to death with his bare fucking hands. He dog walks these motherfuckers. It's unbearable. It's literally what fan fiction is built upon. And obviously the fucking mind that made Walking Dead would come up with some superhero shit like this. It's like Superman walking into the, the Hall of Justice. It's like the scene in, in the new, in the Guardian, in the in um, Justice League, especially the Snyder Cut. Uh, it's, it's like the scene when Wonder Woman, Aquaman, The Flash, and Cyborg had to fight Superman and he's beating the shit out of all of them. Easily, without even trying, he's destroying them. That's what's happening in the scene. Only thing is, War Woman is like Wonder Woman, so she's you know strong as shit. And the guy Immortal, he's got super strength too. So there's a bunch of people with super strength, but the first thing he does, he's trying to hit this one. He's trying to hit that one. He's trying to, and Red Rush keeps moving everybody out of the way before Omni Man can fucking hit him. Omni-Man's got super speed, too, but he's not as fast as Red Rush. So Red Rush keeps doing all this, and Red Rush is running around him, punching him, punching him, punching him. He knows it's not hurting him a lot, but if he hits him enough, that shit's going to take a toll, you know? Eventually, Omni-Man gets a hold of that wrist. 
And that's it for motherfucking Red Rush. Literally, literally, there's, I keep saying literally, sorry. There is a fucking, the scene is Omni-Man is basically crushing Reddy Rush's head. Everyone's rushing towards him, but because he's got super speed, it looks like slow-mo, but everyone's moving at a microscopic pace, and he's slowly trying to crush this man's head. And Red Rush is punching him so fast and so hard in the chest. He is it, like just like beating the fuck out of his internal organs. That's all he could do. Literally, Omni Man starts spitting up blood while he's trying to crush Red Rush's head. Red Rush is hitting him so many times. He breaks through his fucking costume. He he's hitting him so hard at one point. Omni Man pops out Red Rush's eyeball, trying to crush his skull, and he fucking. Ready, Red Rush is hitting him so hard he breaks both his hands and wrists hitting Omni-Man's chest, but he doesn't stop because he's trying to hurt him until this man kills him. And eventually, he crushes motherfucking uh, Red Rush's head. It's insane. And everybody's like, oh my God. And then, um, you know, chaos commences. War Woman takes her fucking... Hammer bat, which is like this fucking metal ball, just a round ball at the end of this big, heavy fucking metal stick and just crank. She fucking clonks Omni-Man in the head. Fucking Immortal comes and bow, pops him in the fucking face. And mother- everybody's trying to get their licks in. Anybody he gets a fucking hand on, though, he sends them to their, their respectful gods. Oh, my word. Uh, the guy Darkwing, who's just a, you know, a rich, crafty Talented black man. He grabs that motherfucker's ankle and puny gods him. Hulk style. <laughs> when he throws the man's body at Green Ghost, it's like a fucking, it's like a a balloon that popped. It's like wet on the inside and, and floppy. It was just, she goes, oh dear God, no. And he punches through her fucking face. He punches through her face. I was like, why are you doing this? I don't understand God. But you definitely have my attention. Sorry, water. Anyway. um, Yeah, so he just commenced to beating the shit out of everybody. The fish guy with the water, he can hold him back for a minute. Martian man wraps himself around Omni man. Fucking white while they do that. War Woman and Immortal are just beating the shit out of Omni Man's face. Blood is just pouring on by his boots. It's just pouring because they're beating the shit. But he eventually kills Martian Man. He fucking uh, <laughs> he punches fucking uh, Immortal in the through the stomach, <laughs> and then he fucking hits War Woman. Her fucking ball hammer thing flies in the sky. Once he grabs that, everybody's dead. He hits the fucking fish man and, and knocks his head off. And then he fucking takes uh, War Woman when she rushes at him, grabs her neck and turns her head all the way around to where her face, her chin is touching her back. Too much. Too much. This is the first fucking episode, y'all. This is the first episode. And at the end... He's all beat the fuck up. Everybody's mushed in this fucking oatmeal on the on the floor. He just lays down next to them all and passes out. Cause they beat the fucking shit out of Omni Man. It may take it may take ten little Omni Mans to beat his ass, but they beat his fucking ass in the midst of him ripping them apart. At least they got some fucking licks in. And that was the end of the goddamn episode. Holy fucking smokes! Can you imagine that shit? That is. Crazy people shit. I apologize when I say that. I don't mean to disrespect anybody that's got a, a mental issue. I'm just saying, like, that is... It's un, it's something someone would say that sounds unbelievable once it hits the ears. It's just like, what? Oh. Oh. Oh, my word. Oh, anyway. Um... You know, and the show continues on, episode two. Uh, dad doesn't come home. The wife is concerned. I'm not going to 
you know, crazy detailed, these other two episodes for real like that. I'm burn through them right quick. Because I want you to watch the shit. You know what I mean? But, um, yeah, so the second episode, the husband's, uh, Omni-Man's not home. The wife is like, what the fuck? Um, he, you know, the kid goes to school. No, 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 no. They, uh, before he tries to go to school, some government people come. And they're like, yeah, your dad's in the hospital. He's in the super duper hospital. The, the, was it the Global Defense Agency, the GDA? That's the world government organization that helps superheroes with different issues all over the world. Uh, they're helping. The, the dad's in the hospital. Everyone else is dead. They don't know what's going on. No one knows what happens. Uh, so, out of nowhere, some aliens attack downtown. They say, I'm, I'm kind of short on fucking heroes right now. So, Incredible throws his throws his suit on, and he it's his first time jumping into, like, a big a big war, you know what I mean, a big scene. And he's like, whoosh, 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 whoosh. come on, get in there, get in there, get in there. And he flies into the situation. It's, it's literally green little green men in space suits with ray guns, and they are disintegrating human beings downtown. It's the man, woman, child, elderly, fat, skinny, whatever, Hindu, Christian, it don't matter what you are, they're killing them. So we get to um, Invincible gets into uh, the fray, and he kind of doesn't know what he's doing. He gets hit with a ray gun. He's like, oh, my God, his ears are ringing. And, like, hella humans are getting blown up around him with the ray gun. He's covered in blood. He's like, oh, my God. And eventually this new team of this team of heroes come in. They're called uh, Teen Team. T-E-E-N. T-E-A-M. Teen Team. Sounds weird when I say it. But um, there's this girl in there, redhead. Her name is uh, Adam Eve. You know, A-T-O-M. Eve. Adam Eve. Not... Like, she's an Adam and an Eve. Anyway, she's got, like, super pink energy powers, and she's throwing lightning rods and balls of energy. And there's another guy named Rexplosion, and he's got, he's kind of like a Gambit-type character where he can, like, take, in like, explosive energy, put it into, like, coins and throw it at shit, and it blows up. And then there's a robot named Robot. <laughs> and there's a girl named Duplicate, because she can turn herself into more than one of herself. She can turn herself into at least three of herself. And so if somebody kills two or three, she just makes more of two or three. Pretty interesting characters. All offshoots of different characters that already exist, like Multiple Man and fucking Gambit and, you know, whatever, whatever. Who gives a shit? It's fucking badass. But they come to help out and stop the aliens, and the aliens have a, um, they have a, uh, time stream issue where time moves, I don't know if time moves slower in their time stream, so when they come into our dimension, they're aging, like, super fast. They were, like, on Earth for, like, five minutes, and then they all start aging a old age, so they had to go back in their portals. And, in, and Invincible accidentally hurts this older lady, like, badly. Like, he picked her up to save her. They start shooting ray guns. He's trying to fly off. They hit him in the back. And he fell on the ground, and he stumbled, boom, 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 boom. And when he, he was in this hole with this old lady he was trying to protect, he realized he broke both her arms and both her legs. He's covered in her, in her blood now. Like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. And, he, like, that's when Adam Eve and the, the teen team come, and they're like, take her to the hospital. We got this. He rushes her to the super-duper global defense uh, agency hospital where they got all the super save you shit oh man then he's like crying at his dad's bedside covered in blood i was trying to be like dad i couldn't be like dad it was too much oh. but like he it's kind of it, it was a, it was a great scene it, it shows a superhero really getting into it and not just being a natural and everything worked out and no this is fucked up shit you're trying to protect humans and you've got super strength if you fall and hurt yourself, you so strong, you might destroy this regular human being you were trying to save. He broke this old lady's legs and arms. Like, and it freaked him the fuck out. 
Oh, that life-giving water. That's, that's me putting it down on the table. That's me tapping the table. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, anyway. Um, yeah, so that's the whole thing. And then he goes, once he goes back to school, he's all kind of depressed. And his friend's like, what the fuck is wrong with you, dude? What is going on? He goes, my dad was attacked. His best friend does not know his dad is Omni-Man. Because Omni-Man is not around whenever, you know, since they've been kids and shit, whatever. Uh, you know, not around when the best friend's around, I mean. So um, he sees this girl. He goes, wait, Eve, Eve Wilkins. He sees a redhead at the lockers, and he recognizes her as being the fucking superhero Adam Eve who saved his ass out there when he crippled this old woman. He goes, I need to go talk to her. And his, and his friend goes, yeah, you and every other straight boy in a 10-mile radius. That's Eve Wilkins, dude. She is way out of your league. And he walks right up to her. He's like, Eve, right? And she goes, Mark, right? She, he's like, I just want to thank you for saving me uh, yesterday. Saving you yesterday? Sa sa <gasps> You're, that was you? Dude. <clears throat> and he's like freaking out. And she goes, do you want to talk about, do you need to talk about yesterday? He's like, oh, uh, uh, come on, let's go talk about yesterday. <laughs> so she breaks down the psychology of how she's like, she's like, how did I not know I follow your team on Instagram? How did I not know you went to my school? He goes, it's a psychological thing. If you don't expect to see a superhero at your high school, you're not going to see a superhero at your high school. And I'm sitting here like, you have the same name as a superhero with red hair. I call it bullshit, but fair enough, I'll play along. Uh, she's telling him, come meet the team, you know, come hang out. It could be cool. Um, <clears throat> uh, yeah, it's just, he, and, oh, the aliens come back. And when the aliens come back, it's only been a couple days for us, but for them, it's been a couple decades because time moves faster there. Yeah, time moves faster there, some shit. Uh, so it's been a couple decades. So when they come back, they're ready for uh, Adam's, Adam Eve's powers. They're ready for Rexplosion's powers. They're ready for Duplicate's powers. They're ready for Robot's powers. They actually have on these wristbands that make them impervious to the time shift, how their bodies age so quickly in our time. They got these wristbands on. <clears throat> So the whole time they're trying to fight, because they're in there killing, they're out killing more people downtown like they did last time. Robot literally hacks into their wristbands. So he, and it's taking them a long time, but he's trying to hack into their wristbands so they all start, stop working, so they all can start aging and die again. So, you know, but this time, Invincible's way more of a help in this fight. He can actually help them fight. Last time he hurt one person and had to leave. So that was super cool. The dad's still in a coma. And then this fucking, they have this Damien Darkblood, the demon detective. Literally, the head of the global defense agency was sitting there talking. And then he, he saw his own breath. It was getting cold in the room. He kicked everybody out. Next thing you know, this fucking demon with a whole red tail, red body, red horns, and a fedora, and a long, and a trench coat is trying to get the clues at the at the crime scene he's touching all the superheroes blood and he can see how they were murdered he can't see who murdered them but he can see how they were murdered and he's trying to make sense of it because damien dark blood is a demon who escaped from hell and the way he stays out of hell is by doing good deeds and saving people if he doesn't do good deeds and help people he's gonna get sent back to hell i'm sitting here like Where's that fucking show? I don't need him to be a goddamn side character. I want to watch Damien Darkblood, the fucking demon detective. It's a lot of shit that goes on in this show. And I'm like, man, are we talking spinoff? God damn, Mark Rob Kirkman is going to be just sitting on money forever. God bless him. And when he starts that podcast, money, money, money. Anyway, um... So the demon detective is the person that's going to be keeping up with what's going on in this uh, awkward situation. Okay, so yeah, it's, this is all about you know relationships and the, the, 
the girl that Mark had a crush on in the beginning, the chocolate girl, Amber, she's trying to see what's up because she's interested in Mark. But Mark seems kind of busy being a fucking, doing whatever the fuck he's doing. Is not really giving her the attention she wants. So she has to press up on him and be kind of pushy on a certain level. Uh, that's a, it's a great storyline on the side. Pushing forward because I'm not going to give you every detail of this episode. Watch the shit for yourself. Eventually, Omni-Man, the dad, wakes up from his coma. And he's better. And he gets home. And, you know, he's trying to feel better. <laughs> and while he's sitting at home, <laughs> there's this uh, alien that comes who's voiced by Seth Rogen. He's Alan the alien. And his dad goes, yeah, this guy was here last time. I basically had to fight him. He's not that tough. Uh, fucking Mark can take him. Mark, go handle that. Mark has to fly up in space. He goes, how do I breathe in space? His dad goes, that's the fun part. So Mark flies up to the crust of the earth, uh, you know, crust of the air, our air pocket of, of the earth, <sighs> takes a deep breath and just holds his breath and goes into space. <laughs> Your dad told you just hold your breath and go in this point and get in the stomach. <laughs> oh, oh, he goes up to fight. Uh, he goes up to fight the alien, and it's a goofy fight. It's silly, and uh, turns out Alan the alien is just a guy who's a planet inspector. He's supposed to go around making sure that. Each planet has at least one person strong enough to protect it from at least a guy as strong as him. <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> he goes, yeah, I'm Alan, by the way. He goes, uh, what's your name? He goes, I'm invincible. He goes, whoa, whoa pretty optimistic, eh? He goes, I just fought you, and uh, trust me, you're plenty invincible. <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> Not to mention, Seth Rogen is making a live action movie based on this this entire property I'm telling telling you about called Invincible. He's making a live action movie of this shit. You know what that means? If and when Invincible, the live action movie through Universal does well, there is a possibility Seth Rogen might grab his nuts with his fucking uh uh business partner Evan and they may make an entire invincible universe through Universal. Because Universal has, superhero-wise, they don't have much except for Hulk. And that's a Marvel thing. That's why Hulk hasn't had a solo movie. That's why Hulk is always a second, a second banana in another Marvel movie. Because Universal going to have to split the, uh, Marvel and Disney going to have to split their cheese down the middle if they make a Hulk, uh, a Hulk movie. Anyway. Uh, but if they do this incredible, incredible, you know, incredible, I keep saying incredible. If they do this invincible live action movie, Seth Rogen and Evan, <laughs> cash cow, 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 cash cow. You can feel it. You can feel the shit. Anyway, um, so what else happens? Um, the dad wakes up. Uh, the aliens come back again. The third time, they're even more prepared. They've changed their DNA to where the time stream doesn't affect them and they don't grow old. And they also have every tool they need to be able to try to stop Adam, Eve, the rest of the teen teams, the teen team, and Invincible. So they're beating the shit out of Invincible and, and the crew. And <laughs> out of nowhere, Omni-Man pops up holding the alien by his head. And he goes, are you all right, Mark? <laughs> Mark is like, yeah, yeah, I'm okay. Next thing you know, all of the aliens just start shooting all their ray guns, all their soup of cannons and guns and shit at Omni-Man. And there's a big cloud of smoke. And then once it goes, it dissipates. Omni-Man goes, my turn. And he just flies through and just dismantles just droves of these aliens at once. He's just swinging and it's knocking down fucking people 20 feet away because the wind is so strong. And Mark is sitting there looking at 
what could possibly be his future as a super. He's like, my father is the most powerful superhero on this planet. And I came from his balls. So I'm at least as half as strong as this. And if you're half as strong, you are a problem to deal with, with whoever's invested and involved. What else? Uh, oh, and it gets so intense, the alien that really had a bone to pick with Invincible keeps coming back, keeps bringing up, you know, he got his, uh, Mark Invincible knocked his eye out, this one alien, the first time they came. The second time they came, he came back. And he gave them all the wristbands, and they got sent away. So the third time, he's in this fucking super monster suit, which is formidable with Invincible's powers. That's why he was beating the shit out of him. That's why Omni-Man had to come and shut it all down. But Omni-Man's so invested in it, all of the aliens are running back into their uh, portals to go back to their dimension. Omni-Man flies through the portal with the fucking the, the leader, the alien leader and disappears. Out of nowhere, Invincible, in front of the team team, his superhero friends that he just made, he goes, Dad! Rexplosion goes, hold on. Omni-Man's your father? That's like, what the fuck? For them, that's like, you know, fucking, jo you know, LeBron James is your dad? What? You know what I mean? But, um, so, Invincible goes home to tell his mom, we got in a fight with the Flaxons. Dad came, fucking laid waste, but he also flew through the alien portal. And the mom was like, ah, oh, okay. She was like, and he was like, you're not more worried? He said, when your father was in a coma, beaten half to death by somebody we don't know, then I was worried. But your father flying through a portal into an alien dimension, that's just Tuesday. The things this woman has been through. I'm so I love this Invincible show, but I need an Omni Man show. I need a show from when he first got on Earth and fell in love with this lovely Asian woman, and they motherfuckers started this beautiful life together. I want to see that show. Anyway, there's a bunch of shows I want to see from this show. I want to see a Guardians of the Globe show. I want to see how them pricks got together. Anyway, Whew, anything is possible in time. But um, so they show you. What happens inside of the portal once Omni-Man flew into the portal? He literally goes, I don't think you all are understanding me. Earth is not yours to conquer. And he lays waste to this entire species of alien. You get to see what, a, what his species of alien can really do. What Mark slash Invincible will be capable of in time. He's flying so hard that he he turns into a ball of fire. He's flying so fast, he's disintegrating bu uh, buildings in uh, on their planet. He's destroying every single one of them, laying waste to them. Then he's holding up a mountain above. After he finishes it all, which obviously took him some time because he grew a beard. He literally was there. So The man has a mustache. He has nothing but a mustache. He was there so long, his hair grew out longer and he grew a beard. That's how much that's how much murder he did on this planet. He held up a mountain above the scientists from this alien planet to make them give him a portal to get him back home to Earth. Once they opened the portal, he dropped the mountain on them and then flew back into the portal. And he was home. He was home to his family. To them, it wasn't it wasn't more than a a few hours. To him, it was you know probably some weeks, maybe you know. It was, <laughs> This show is too much. Sorry for yelling. Sorry, sorry. I'm sorry. I just threw my water bottle. I apologize. Um. Anyway, that's Invincible, gang. I'm not going to get too long and drawn out tonight. I just wanted to tell you about something that's new and cool and interesting. Um, if you hadn't seen it, I'm sorry I spoiled it. If you had seen it, you know exactly what the fuck I'm talking about. This shit is incredible. I was going to get into the third uh, episode and get all extra uh, talking. Nah, we ain't got to do all that shit. I want you to soak this shit in because we're going to come back to it. I've only seen the first three episodes. So I'll probably bring up the the, uh, the other episodes and other episodes of mine. But, um, but for now, 
But for now, this is What Year Is It with Rockwell Knuckles. I want to say thank you for popping up. Thank you for hanging out. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Please don't ever leave. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.